Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week I thought it might be fun. We had a, have had a lot of customers asking about uh, migratory birds and when we might see them uh, locally. And so I thought it would be fun to go exploring on the internet and take a look at some different migratory bird uh, maps that different organizations have to offer. So there are um, four primary migratory bird flyways in North America um, and there's some nice resources no matter which flyway you live along, whether it's the Atlantic Flyway, the Mississippi Flyway, that's what um, we are in here in Michigan. Um, the Central Flyway uh, or the Pacific Flyway. There's some great resources out there for you to check out. Okay, so I would say by far um, the most asked question we get is when will the hummingbirds be back? And so for us here in Michigan, that's the ruby-throated hummingbird. One place that you can look um, is Hummingbird Central. So there are um, several migratory bird maps that are kind of bird group focused. This one of course on hummingbirds and um, a lot of them rely on just uh, citizens reporting their observations. So if you do choose to report make sure you take a look at their uh, policies and you're you're following along and you understand um, what of your your information they're they're publishing and sort of following the rules of how they want you to report but I like checking this one out just to keep track of what the hummingbirds are doing so here's the 2024 spring migration map as of today and you can see the different species of hummingbirds across the country are color coded. Uh, here in Michigan, we're looking at the dark red um, coded for the ruby throated hummingbird. So for all of the customers out there who've been asking me uh, about that, you can see that our ruby throated hummingbirds um, are definitely within the, the southern half of the United States. It looks like they're making their way into um, southern Indiana and Illinois and hopefully it won't be too much longer. Hopefully by the end of April or beginning of May we'll, we'll be seeing them here in Michigan. But this is a great way to check and you can um, click on an observation and I believe this one they're focused on city center so it's not going to give you um, a lot of detail but at least you can um, see what city the uh, bird is being reported from. Similarly uh, there's one by Ducks Unlimited that is waterfowl focused so you can pan around um, and see what different uh, DU uh, biologists are reporting um, in an area so you can click and view reports and see what's going on maybe with your um, favorite kind of uh, duck, swan, goose, all different sorts of waterfowl species. So make sure you check out that resource if that's what you really enjoy. I think one um, group of maps that uh, gets a lot of citizen scientists reporting is Journey North. And Journey North is celebrating its 30th anniversary here in 2024. I think they're best known probably for tracking monarch migration. Um, you can check uh, that out. Uh, they have uh, first sighted monarchs as an example. Um, you do want to take these um, with a grain of salt. Uh, 
I'm trying to remember, I think it was this one, the ones with the squares in Journey North have pictures. So obviously that is um, not a monarch uh, being reported here. So you just have to take the data with a grain of salt. This is awfully far north for this time of year for monarchs. But uh, down in Texas, that's, you know, it's possible to be seeing them um, in March as they're making their way up from Mexico. So, sorry, I digress. A little tangent about butterflies, but um, they also have, and, and many folks may not realize this, uh, maps for uh, different bird species as well. So there's color coding um, based on dates over here. You can see not a whole lot of oriole activity being reported here. Um, a couple in South Carolina. Uh, but yeah, we still have a little, little ways to go on uh, the oriole migration this year. But I like to compare maps and look at multiple. They have a ruby-throated hummingbird one too. Um, and you can see much more documentation uh, going on with the ruby-throated hummingbird. Um, so uh, it's good to look at, at multiple maps, but generally pretty similar data. Uh, they are across the southern United States so far and we're we're waiting for some reports uh, for them to be in Michigan. Okay, so for a broader view and an understanding of um, migratory connections across a lot of different species, I really like uh, this Audubon um, Bird Migration Explorer. So they have information um, about over 450 bird species and um, these maps aren't real-time but a compilation of uh, past data and have a lot of really good information at that um, larger landscape view. So you can click um, and look for different uh, species I'm going to look at tundra swans, for example. And what I like um, about uh, the species migration map is that it shows uh, where the species is by season. So summer range in green, winter range in blue, with year round in this sort of um, tan color. And the map changes. You can see here that it just keeps repeating running through the year. The different migratory periods are shown and um, they, they overlay data from individually tracked birds with different levels of precision. The, the yellow are the um, higher preci precision tracked individuals and the brown dots show you the abundance of the species. The larger the dot, the more of that species during that particular uh, time of year. So it's, it's neat to see big picture migration patterns in this way. So if we keep an eye on Michigan here, you can see that more abundant during spring migration and then they they move on up further north. So I really like uh, playing with this. They also have um, species connection maps. So you could um, click on an area and see connected location. So a bird that spends some time in this area will also be in um, occur in, in these different different areas and they have um, conservation challenges as well. Things that the birds might encounter um, like roads and agriculture and other things that um, are conservation challenges for a given species. So 
they're definitely um, a lot of cool species. I mean, you could use this for um, other migratory birds, the Orioles, the hummingbirds as well. You can take a quick look at Baltimore Oriole, and you can see that uh, they're migrating um, up, and that, and then you can watch the map here and see, okay, what time of year do I normally get this species in my area? So for Michigan, it's really not until May um, that we, we tend to see this species. And I'll end with, uh, I think, a relatively new um, bird migration set of tools. This is uh, BirdCast migration tools uh, put together by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology with um, other partners and pulling from a number of data sets, including radar. And so I think this is really fun because it's, it's a combination of real-time data, um, meteorological data and uh, that can affect bird migration, and modeling that forecasts uh, short-term, like three-day forecast for bird migration and will help you understand uh, what species you're likely to encounter in the near future and that can help inform if you're out doing birding looking for migratory species um, this set this suite of tools can help you uh, with that and so there's a very nice and I'll include links for all of these in the um, post description but Cornell um, all about birds has a very nice summary on using this set of tools, but you basically want to take a look at the three-day forecast, look at the map, and see um, how many birds are likely. And, and this is focused because it's radar-based. Um, these are species that migrate at night, which many, many of our migratory species do migrate at night, um, but some of the other resources for hummingbirds that migrate during the day are uh, more appropriate for those daytime migratory species. Then you can um, take the dashboard, the migratory dashboard, and drill down to migration activity in your county, which I think is really cool. See if they're gonna be high or low numbers, how many species flying through, and then they'll do um, an expected nocturnal migrants list. So that can inform your birding uh, the next day you go out. So let's take a look at some of those um, briefly. This is the live bird migration map and uh, you can see it's for right now. There are uh, over 33 million birds in flight um, as we speak. The map colors, the darker it is, the lower numbers, the brighter it is, um, the higher numbers of uh, migrating birds. The, that's like your traffic level. And then um, it shows you where the active radar is, where uh, sunset is and the general direction birds are migrating at this time. So that's uh, a fun a fun thing to look at if we go back to um, the three-day forecast you can see a thumbnail uh, of what it'll be like in your area for um, the, the three days coming. So that'll maybe help you plan, um, or if you like to listen at night for migratory birds, um, that'll, that'll help inform um, when you might do that activity. 
And then this migration dashboard, I was playing around with this. And at the top here, you can enter in your county. So if I put in uh, Midland County, Michigan. So it starts um, at eight o'clock at night and um, it's pretty low here in Midland County uh, this early in um, April. But you can see this number will change with time and here is that list of expected nocturnal migrants and my understanding is this is based on eBird data um, and uh, I just think is you know very uh, scientific data uh, based and should give you a good sense of what kind of migratory species. I've definitely noticed in my own yard a lot more dark-eyed juncos than I than I had this winter, um, and uh, I, my American tree sparrows are still here, but they're starting to to migrate through in larger numbers and. Uh, it's just neat to kind of keep an eye out, know what to be looking for um, as you bird during uh, spring migration. So I am going to try to go back because earlier I was looking at data from yesterday because we hadn't quite hit the st sunset start time. So. Um, Migratory, like nocturnal migratory birds usually start um, migrating about half an hour to 45 minutes after sunset and hit the peak, the greatest numbers, two or three hours um, after sunset. So you can see last night, uh, traffic crossing Midland County was high, um, had over 190,000 um, birds cross the county and uh, the peak migration traffic uh, was 32,000 and it shows you the direction, the uh, average speed and altitude, how, how high are they flying. So there's a lot of fun data and graphs if you're a data nerd. Um, you'll definitely like this resource and uh, yeah play around, check it out. It's interesting to see how different weather patterns um, affect bird migration across the country and in your area. And uh, what a great way to have a leg up on, you know, what new things you might be seeing as, you're, uh, as you go birding in the field the following day. So I hope that helps you. Um, have some maps to look at and uh, predict what you might be seeing as far as our migratory birds go. I hope you get out, get some birding in, and have a good week.